Hey there, welcome back to Geeky Greenhouse. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to grow herbs in hydroponic ball jars. So getting into hydroponics is a really fun way to get through the winter and why not grow some herbs that you can use in your kitchen to spice up your winter meals. I have a basil seedling here that is ready to be transplanted into its hydroponic container. So I'm gonna show you the entire process of planting the seeds all the way through to harvesting your first batch of basil. We'll also demonstrate some other herbs that you can plant. You can pretty much plant anything you want, but we're gonna highlight some herbs that we like to grow indoors. So with that, let's get started with the supplies that you'll need. First, of course, you'll need some ball jars. You can use whatever size you'd like, but we recommend using a wide mouth ball jar because you can use these three inch net cups which fit perfectly inside of the ball jars. But if you have a narrow mouth ball jar or something like a leftover milk container like this one here, you can repurpose that into a custom hydroponic growing container. Next, you'll need some net cups. These are three inch net cups which fit perfectly in the wide mouth ball jars. But if you don't wanna purchase these on their own, you can use something like a styrofoam or plastic cup and cut it off wherever it bottlenecks inside of the ball jar. And then you'll need to either drill or cut some holes to allow the roots to grow through them, almost like you're mimicking a net cup, but again, repurposing something that you already have. I would not recommend using paper cups because they tend to degrade over time. So make sure you use a material that doesn't break down. You'll need a media to start your seeds. These are rapid rooters, but you can also use rock wool. You can even use soil, but it does get messy. And the benefit of these is they don't shed anything. They don't break down and it makes it really easy, clean and simple to transplant into the hydroponic system. These are basically designed to fit in six cell seed starting trays. And you can just basically pop the seed in, keep it moist until your seeds germinate. Super simple. You'll need some Hydroton clay pellets. These are basically just little balls of hardened clay. And these are just used to keep your seedling in place inside of the net cup. Obviously these three inch net cups are much too big for one seed plug. So we'll be filling it with the Hydroton pellets to sort of surround the seedling with something. And lastly, you'll need some hydroponic nutrients. We love these Dynagrow nutrients. They're just so simple. Uh, it's one teaspoon to an entire gallon of water, so this tiny little container will last us a really long time. I'll leave links down in the description below where you can get these products. Now this is optional, but I like to spray paint the bottles with some dark spray paint, and that is to prevent the light from getting through the glass and growing algae in your hydroponic nutrient solution. You can also use an opaque material like tin foil or a brown paper bag even, anything that will block the light from getting into the ball jar. So with all of your supplies in hand, let's get started with planting the seeds. Now when you use rapid rooters, it's so simple. There's a pre-punched hole in the top of the medium. You're gonna just pop your seeds in there and then moisten it really well with just plain tap water and allow those seeds to germinate. Most herbs will germinate within seven days or so, but you wanna make sure during germination that you don't let those seeds dry out. So just come back once or twice a day and make sure that the rapid rooter is still moist and wait for your seeds to sprout. Once they've sprouted, get them under grow lights indoors and make sure that you give them plenty of water to continue growing. And after about a week or so, you should start to see the roots poking through the bottom of the rapid rooter. This is the perfect time to get your seedling into its hydroponic ball jar. So while your seedlings are sprouting and growing, you can prepare your ball jars. So like I said, I like to spray paint these a day or two in advance and allow them to completely dry. It can also be worth it to put another layer of paint just to make sure that it's fully opaque. Next, you wanna thoroughly rinse the clay pellets. They come in a very sort of dusty container and you just wanna rinse off all of those dust particles so you're not breathing them in. And then I'm gonna start by just filling the bottom of the net cup with about an inch or so of the hydroton pellets. And this is just to elevate the seed plug a little bit off of the bottom of the net cup. Next, you wanna carefully remove the seedling out of its tray and gently place it down on top of the clay pellets and get it right into the center in a good position. Then you just wanna surround that with your clay pellets to keep it secure and in place. With the seedling sitting in the net cup and surrounded by the clay pellets, it's not going anywhere. And now we can just place it into a ball jar. Now mixing up nutrients is just so easy with this Dynagrow solution. Again, one teaspoon or about five milliliters per gallon of water. Just pour that into the gallon, shake it gently, and you're ready to go. And then we wanna fill with the nutrient solution up until the water is just touching the bottom of the root system. We wanna make sure those roots are hydrated. We wanna make sure that they're not going dry. 
On the other hand, you don't want it too high. You don't want to suffocate the plant and have all of the roots sitting underwater because the roots need oxygen and air to breathe. And so the water level is very important. You want to make sure that it's touching that rapid rooter. And you can see just using another rapid rooter to sort of measure this out, the water is just reaching the bottom of where that rapid rooter is sitting. Now I'll transfer this over to the painted ball jar and just pour all that nutrient solution in. Place in the plant. And from here, we're ready to get this under grow lights and continue it growing. Now you could use a ball jar ring just to secure that down uh, and have a little bit of extra security. It's not really necessary, but you can definitely do it if you want it. So now I wanna talk about this type of hydroponics. It's called crack key hydroponics. And basically, instead of using an air pump and a pumice air stone to add oxygen and bubbles to the water, we don't use an air pump and we just allow the roots of the plant to do all the work. So part of the root system is underwater and that's where it gets its water and nutrients. And then part of the root system is actually out of the water in the little air space of our container. And that's really important to keep that air space there because the roots need oxygen to breathe. So you'll start to see these fuzzy roots in that airspace, and those are known as air roots. And the roots below the water will remain sort of waxy and smooth, and those are the water roots. I love this system because it's just so simple. You don't have to go out and buy an air pump. You don't have to have uh, this noisy contraption in your grow space. You just set it up properly from the beginning and allow the plants to grow and drink the water as they do. So that's all for now. Let's check back in in a few weeks when these plants have grown. Okay, so a few weeks have gone by, and as you can see, our basil plant has grown quite a bit. The foliage seems a little bit sparse at this point, and there are two good reasons for that. Number one is that we've been pruning this and using the basil as needed. As you can see, there's a pruning point right in the middle where we cut off and used some basil, and the foliage at the nodes below that cutting point has come back nicely so far. The other reason this plant isn't super vigorous is we had it in our basement where the temperatures were ranging between 60 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just a little bit on the cold side for a warm weather crop like basil. We recently moved it upstairs where it's a little bit warmer, so hopefully it will continue to grow and produce more basil for us to use. You may have also noticed that I added some tin foil around the outside of the container, and that's just to block out additional light. I noticed that my paint job wasn't perfect and some of the light was still getting through into the container, so I just wanted to be on the safe side because algae will eventually grow inside of a container if the light can get in. It's not a matter of if, but when. So I also just transplanted this thyme plant, and this might've been a better option for that colder environment in the basement because thyme can grow pretty well in those cold temperatures. One other thing I wanted to mention before we wrap up is the need to check for pH. Now this isn't totally necessary, but if you notice that your plants are struggling to grow or if they're kind of stunted, it may be a matter of your pH not being in the ideal zone. So a simple pH monitoring system such as this one will allow you to check what the pH is of your water and also adjust it accordingly. I'll leave a link where you can get this, but if you do go with this system here, it's really easy to test for pH, but adjusting the pH can be a little bit tricky. pH down will acidify the water, but a little bit goes a long way when you're decreasing pH. Increasing pH, it takes a little bit more of the pH up liquid, but in either direction you're trying to go, you should definitely start small. If you want to read more about this, check out our article on Geeky Greenhouse. I'll leave a link in the description below. There you'll find links for all of the products that we're using here and some additional tips and tricks for growing your herbs hydroponically. So that's how you grow herbs in hydroponic ball jars. It doesn't take much in the way of resources and you can enjoy fresh herbs and even leafy greens throughout the winter. Thanks so much for watching Geeky Greenhouse and I'll see you next time.